and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video. This video is going to look at Seema's ethical principles. Now, ethics is probably the most important individual topic in the entire Seema syllabus. It's relevant at certificate level, it's relevant for our operational management and strategic level for the objective tests and also for the case study exams. So it's very, very important that you learn the SEMA ethical principles, not just to pass your exam, but because you need to know them, you need to act according to them as you progress in your career because SEMA will expect you to be an ethical accountant. And if you do like this video, then please like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen or visit the website www.astranti.com for more information on the company and some more information on the products that we produce on our courses for all the various different levels and also some free samples. So do check that out. So let's talk about SEMA's ethical principles. Now, these are primarily personal ethics. They're things that you need to act according to, both in your profession and in your life as well. You need to uh, not do anything that's going to bring the, the profession of accountancy into disrepute. So let's take a look at those five principles. I want you to remember these five principles, and I want you to be able to recite them when we get to the end of uh, this section. So what are the five ethical principles? Well, there's integrity, objectivity, professional competence and due care, professional behavior and confidentiality. So let's take a look at each of these in turn, starting with integrity. What it means to act with integrity? Well, in simple terms, it means being straightforward. It means being honest. It means not falsifying information because your manager has told you to and not associating with information that you think is incorrect. Don't stand by information that you believe to be incorrect. So an example of this could be your manager coming to you and saying that, look, the numbers don't look very good for this period, but I've got a meeting with the shareholders. Can you do some fancy creative accounting to make it look like the company has performed far better than it actually has? To agree with that, to go along with that, would be acting unethically. It would be acting without integrity. It also means to act consistently as well. Treat every single person's accounts, every single figure, etc., the same. So act consistently, be straightforward, be honest. Act with integrity. And what about objectivity? Well, objectivity is about being unbiased and impartial. So not just coming down on someone harshly because you don't like them, so you're punishing them for their poor performance or you're making it look in their figures like they've not done very well, but then at the same time, someone that you know or someone that you're friends with is the manager of a different department, so you make it look like their accounts have done really well because you like them as a person. And another example of this is excessive hospitality. So if you're trying to win a contract with someone and rather than just putting a business case forward, you take them out to a five star hotel and take them out for dinner and all these things, you're buttering them up. Excessive hospitality is essentially being impartial or not being impartial, apologies, because you are trying to curry favor. You are risking yourself if you are the person who is receiving that excessive hospitality, you're risking your own personal objectivity as well. Because, oh, those guys, they, yeah, they took me out to that dinner. They did all this and that. And that might affect your decision making. Part of being an accountant is being objective. Professional competence and due care. This is all to do with making sure you can do your job effectively. Now, the accountancy world is constantly changing. You all have to undertake a CPD once you're qualified to make sure you are keeping yourself up to date with changes in the profession, changes in the standard. And so it's important as an accountant to make sure that you are doing that because otherwise you risk being unprofessional. If you don't learn the new way of recording assets or whatever it may be, then you're not going to be able to do your job effectively. Now, on to professional behavior, 
which is similar to professional competence, but this is more to do with your own actions, your own behavior, as the name would suggest. So doing things that will discredit the uh, profession. So lying about things, making exaggerated uh, claims, using overly creative accounting, etc. That's going to make the public look down on the profession. Oh, accountants, they're all just trying to make companies look like they've done really well to get out of paying tax as well by moving things offshore and all this. You don't want to do that because that's going to bring uh, the profession into disrepute, which will affect the profession as a whole. So acting in a way that basically makes it look like accountants are a professional people that are doing a proper job and they're doing it properly, making sure that you're not doing something that makes people look down upon accountants. And also complying with laws. That should be a given. As an accountant, you should always comply with all laws, both for legal laws, but also rules and regulations with regards to accounting. And finally, confidentiality. So making sure that you are not using information for your own gain, you know, blackmailing, etc. And also that you are just keeping information confidential, as the name would suggest, because it's not for you to share information, even with people like your family. Even if you just go home to your husband or your wife or your children, you discuss information, private information about a business, that is actually a breach of confidentiality. You may think nothing of it, but that's actually a breach. And not only does this continue during your employment or throughout your employment, it actually continues post-employment. So if you work for accounting firm A or company A, and then you move to accounting firm B or company B, then you are still expected to safeguard all that information that you have about company A, about accounting firm A, and not use that information to uh, put yourself in a better position within company B, to say, oh, company A are doing this, so I know that we can get around them by doing this. Now, that would be, again, a breach of confidentiality. So those are the five principles. I want you to make a note of them, take them in and make sure that you are acting in accordance with them. We're going to wrap up this video now by going through an example. So I'm going to give you a scenario here. And this is about someone called Pascal. Now, Pascal's just started working for a company called Unethical Limited. And they have asked him to conduct a tax return. Now, Pascal doesn't know how to do a tax return, so he says, yes, I'll do it, and then looks up online how to do it, because he wants to impress his new employers. And he tries his best, but he doesn't really quite know how to do it. So what he does whenever he's unsure is he simply chooses whichever option is going to keep tax to a minimum, because he wants to impress his new managers and wants to save the money. So even though that might not be the right option, he puts it as the right option because he wants to keep the tax down. He then goes off to a party and tells everyone about how much money he's saving for the company and how great he's going to be as an employee here. So uh, there are quite a few ethical breaches in this question. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video for a moment, have a think about this story, and think about what kinds of ethical breaches have happened. Come back and we'll go through it together. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at the ethical breaches then. So where is the integrity breach? Well, the integrity breach here is that he's lied about being capable of doing a tax return. He should have just said, I can't do a tax return. I've never learned how to do a tax return. I don't yet know how to do it. I'm sure I could learn how to do it, but don't rely on me to do one for you now because I don't know how to do it. So he's not being honest. He's not being straightforward, which is what being integrity or acting with integrity is all about. Also, he's showing bias as well. Whenever he doesn't know what to do, he just puts whatever is going to save the company the most money. So he's not being impartial there. He's just doing what is going to benefit the company. And then, of course, a professional competence and due care as well. 
he should not have done the tax return if he did not know how to do it. So not only was it an integrity breach by saying that he can do it, but he actually then went under the process of trying to do it, despite not knowing how. And he's not acting professionally as well. He's not acting with professional behavior by not applying all the proper rules effectively. And finally, quite clear one at the end, he goes to the party and tells everyone about the success, about all the money that he's saving, talking about tax returns for this organization. So that is a breach of confidentiality as well. He shouldn't be going to a party and talking about the taxes and the profit of the company to his friends and family. So lots of ethical breaches for Pascal. And what you should be taking away from this is that, that you don't want to be a Pascal. No disrespect to anyone called Pascal who may be watching uh, this video, but what I mean is you don't want to be someone who is lying about the ability to do a tax return, who is not applying the rules, who is going to parties and discussing sensitive business information, because you wouldn't be acting ethically if you were to do that. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and have found it useful. Please do like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen if you do want to see more of these videos. We're going to be posting videos about exam technique, about the case studies, about the objective tests, and also career advice and things like that. And do visit the website for more information on our courses. Again, ethics is a really, really important subject for the SEMA exam. You will need it at every single level, certificate, operational management, and strategic for both the objective tests and uh, the case of study exams. So it's a really useful topic to know and a very important thing for you to take on board for your own career as well, because SEMA will expect you to act ethically throughout your career when you're qualifying and also after you have qualified.